Good morning, everybody. It's Max Convexity. How's your morning going so far? Mine's going pretty good. Jackson and I have not been on our walk yet. I'm going to go when I get this done. All right, let's look and see how the market opened up with regards to these defiance and yield max funds. Let's just check out the five minute max spreadsheet and take a real quick gander what's going on. Hey, the past couple of days, the benchmark's been outperforming. I keep saying the benchmark's five for five. Well, I just noticed the freaking, the logic was broken the, the or the, the formatting got broken back in here somewhere. There's no way it's, anyway, uh, my apologies. Uh, on oh gosh i thought maybe on this day we really did lead on the way down but oh gosh hang on let me show you the difference it makes okay yeah it makes a difference when you have the right formula in there we did lead four out of on four out of the five but uso y has been getting murdered lately so of course we didn't lead on that and th so that was Friday. This was yesterday. We we outperformed on four of them. Today we're outperforming on the same. Well, actually, that's another story. Uh, disregard that. I wish I wouldn't even mention that. I, if I don't, if anyone knows how to do this, let me know. But I have to do something manually. And if I don't do something manually, uh, I need to freeze yesterday's prices. And if I don't do it by 830 in the morning or I forget to do it, which is what happened this morning, it's picking up today's prices. So anyway, back here, it's accurate, but on yesterday's, it's that's today's and yesterday's prices. All right. Well, two out of these three funds are losing money anyway this, this morning. Now, three out of three of them are outperforming as far as the market goes. And of course, we would expect that because covered call funds perform outperform the market on the downside. That's that's the thing. All right. Uh, unfortunately, though, IWMY is down 891,000 at this point. JEPY is down 30,000. And Triple QI is actually up 46,000. Let's look at these charts real quick. All right. So here's for Triple QI. Now look at this. Okay. The, the, uh, the box is misdrawn buy a little bit anyone know python there's no way someone can't tell me that Py it'd, it'd be easier to, to write a to write a python script that would draw this box to look at the spreadsheet and draw this box every morning draw it perfectly where it needs to be without me having to worry about it or or maybe a spreadsheet function that'll do that anyway if anyone knows how to do that let me know all right NASDAQ, SPX. So this is what JEPY trades. It was actually underneath the profit box for a little bit during the first time period. And this is the second time period, the 9 to 9.30 time period. I look at half hour time periods, half hour, half hour bars, they call them, or candles, because these are, these are Japanese candlesticks is what they call this kind of analysis. Okay. Um, we're in good shape there, though. Better shape than we were a little bit ago. And even Russell's trying to turn around. So we'll see. Russell has the most work to do. It is the weakest today. So let's look at some of these yield max stocks. Let's go to Tesla. All right. Tesla opened pretty flat. Uh, these strikes above the market are the Tesla strikes. They're running a bullish covered call strategy. The red is the bearish covered put strategy. I'm pretty sure these guys have two strikes. I don't know what happened to the other one. I'll check into that. But uh, on the bearish side, um, they may have they may have closed one of them. In any event, uh, right now we're right between the two strategies. So both strategies are winning as far as the calls. The, the these these calls are uh, going down, and that's great since they shorted them. These puts are going down in value as well, and that's great since they shorted them as well. As well. If you own both of these funds, it's almost like running a it's almost like owning a short straddle on, on Tesla. Not really, but it has some elements of it. All right. AMD. I don't, don't have the profit boxes. I don't really follow the strikes on some of these, but I will still look at them just to see what's moving. I like to look at AMD and NVIDIA together since they're in the same business. Boy, NVIDIA is amazing, isn't it? 
the high from the other day was right here. Uh, no, I don't know, 50, 11, 58 or something. It touched it this morning and got a little bit above it. We're going to see. But if if this NVIDIA gets above this previous little high here, I think that it'll, it'll drag the market up with the two. Or we, or we can have a good day in the market. Now, if NVIDIA is rejected or stays rejected here, and maybe turns around and goes the other way, it'd be a different story. Um, all right. So that's NVIDIA. Let's look at Mr. Mr. has a three strike ladder, I think three or four strike ladder. Anyway, some of their, they have multiple strikes down here that are blowing out, but not by a whole lot, but they still have a, they still have the 1800 level for some upside appreciation. Misty will have some upside appreciation. If Mr. continues to go up between now and Friday to the 1800 level in theory. So here's Amazon. I need to start trading the or start looking at the Amazon and AMD uh, profit boxes. Like I say, if I could get a script that just draws them on here, um, that would be that would be great. That's what I need to do. OK, or I guess just learn how to do it myself. Uh, probably don't have probably too old and don't have enough patience for it. <laughs> probably get distracted too easy. OK, guys, let's look at it's kind of early in the day, but let's check out the old buffer report. Why don't we? All right. So this is the daily. Uh, let me make sure. Yeah, this is that's the monthly change. OK, so here's the daily. Here's the daily change. Jeez, USO. Why? It's just a daily occurrence. It was down yesterday. Big, too. Um. USOI outperforming the benchmark on the downside. I don't like to see that, but it is early in the day. Yeah, down, damn, 2.03%, where USO is just down uh, not even quite that much. I was just confirming that the buffer report is pulling the right data. So, okay. So not a great day in that world. It does not bode well for defiance. Uh, you know, uh, the USOI is performing a heck of a lot better. Now let's think about why that might be. USOI uses monthly options. Well, uh, so, so a monthly option actually ought to perform a little bit worse on the downside for whatever reason. So for whatever reason, USOY is performing worse on the downside, and that's not how it's designed. It should perform a little bit better than USOI on the downside. We'll keep an eye on it. We're only 37 minutes into the day, and there could be widespreads on the bids and the ask, and, you know. Um, all right, so let's look at the rest of this stuff here. So the benchmarks have all pulled back a little bit. The only one up at this point in the day is QDTE. Nice job, QDTE. Well, I take that back. TLTW is up as well. So TLTW is a competitor for TRESS, which is the Defiance Fund, kind of like USOI is a competitor for USOY, which is the Defiance Fund. Well, the Defiance Funds, both of them are getting getting kicked today because TLTW is uh, doing better. Now, let's check out TLT, which is the underlying. This is the bond. Man, look at this. Uh, TRESS might actually start making some money. Like I always say, Tress needs to get the way these things make money is to have multiple occurrences outside of the Bollinger Bands, especially on the daily. Let's look at this. Not on the daily, but in the daily time frame is what I should have said. I guess you could say on the daily too. Um, but in any event, this this latest gap up took us outside of the Bollinger Bands. So we'll either stay outside the Bollinger Bands and establish a trend like we did back there. In which case, Tress will probably do pretty well, as will TLT, TLTW, or will get rejected and slide back inside the Bollinger Bands like we did here and here. So we'll see. It should be interesting to watch. But old uh, TLT is trying, trying to break out. Let's check out a little Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin's kind of like NVIDIA. I'm looking, I mean, Bitcoin is also, well, this is a daily chart, but Bitcoin is also close to its most recent high and trying to break out over it. And I'm saying if Bitcoin and NVIDIA break out over it, it's going to drag uh, everything else with it. Let's check out Fepi. I haven't looked at Fepi lately. Nice job, Fepi. 
We never looked at gold. Let's start looking at GDX since uh, we'll start looking at GDX since uh, that's a yield max underline. Okay, well, you know, gold, look at that. That's it's it's a bull market for gold. That's a daily chart on the gold. Let's check out GDX, which is not directly gold, but it's gold miners. It's 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 the spy of the gold mining industry, I guess you might say. It's the you know, a big uh a big fund. I know there's another one too. GLD is, but I think that's actually uh, not miners. That's just gold itself. In any event, um, the miners are actually pulling back a little bit recently, but have also been on a huge, uh, a huge terror, terror. Um, all right. Do we check out Google yet? Uh, Google on the daily. I mean, if somebody likes to buy dips, you know, somebody buys it when it reaches the 20 EMA. I mean, there's a trade for you right, right there. Daily, go out, a, you know, get a, uh, get like a 180, which would be a new high, get a 180 call and go out a month. It might be a nice, nice risk reward on that trade. Okay. Uh, speaking of risk reward on trades, I did a GameStop trade yesterday. Uh, in real life and on option strat. I did it on option strat first. I got a little better feels in real life, but in any event, GameStop kind of pulled back a little bit today. So this is what my, my, my trade is at. Well, I wanted to show you guys in my broker can't simulate the implied volatility going down. This can, the implied volatility of the trade was like it, you know, of the position. It's a four legged trade was at, it's like 400 something yesterday, 400. So today it's at 350. So that's a 10%, uh, a 10%, you know, collapse in, in volatility. Anyway, the trade itself is uh, right about a break even. So we'll see. And, uh, you know, we just need one more tick up in volatility between now and Friday. And uh, this can make some pretty good money. Maximum risk on the trade was 451. I did it for like 390 in my own account. I got a little better feels. But risking three ninety, trying to make six or seven hundred dollars if if the uh, if you know if GameStop gets going again, and it's really a play on long volatility because let's say a volatility goes back up tomorrow. See, volatility goes back to four. I think it was at four twenty, which is where it was. Then this trades, you know, one hundred eighty seven dollar winner at expiration. You can also see time passing this way. Anyway, I made a I made a video on it yesterday. You guys that are interested can go watch it. I'll make a follow-up whenever I close the trades and show my fills and stuff. In any event, I thought that was kind of interesting. But yeah, GameStop's pulling. GameStop is pulling back today. I need to put the volatility back to where it's at. This is a long volatility trade. So the other thing is by the by tomorrow, if the volatility pulls back another 10%, you know, then it's going to create a loss. But anyway, max loss on the trade's 450. So we'll see what happens. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys being here for me. I will be back at uh, lunchtime or shortly, shortly thereafter, probably. I'm working on some, uh, I'm always working on other videos, but uh, I'm working on a good video now. In fact, I got up and was working on it this morning before this video. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys can watch that. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys and you have a great morning.